This video is about American history. In this video I will talk specifically about the Monroe Doctrine, but will also provide some information about other events in international relations for the Young Republic. James Monroe was President of the United States from 1817 to 1825. During his first term, the Federalist Party pretty much disappeared, so there were no other candidates when he ran for re-election. Some Americans considered this to be the end of the two-party system. Others, who were disappointed Federalists, sarcastically referred to the time period as the era of good feelings. When Monroe took office in 1817, the United States was still a young country. A couple of years earlier, they had fought a war against England that, geographically speaking, ended in a stalemate. That was the War of 1812. For many Americans, the fact that England did not conquer the United States was evidence that the young country could and would remain independent. It was in this era of, well, let's call it, national confidence that Monroe became president. John Quincy Adams, the son of President John Adams, was appointed Secretary of State, the person responsible for America's international relations. Monroe could not have selected a more capable person for the role. For starters, just two years earlier, Adams had successfully negotiated the Treaty of Ghent, the treaty that ended the War of 1812. In his first year as Secretary of State, John Quincy Adams negotiated with Britain to demilitarize the Great Lakes. The next year, he negotiated with Britain again, this time to set the northern boundary of the Louisiana Purchase lands at the 49th parallel, from the Great Lakes to the Rocky Mountains. The year after that, which was 1819, he concluded a treaty with Spain that gave the United States all of Florida and set the western boundary of the Louisiana Purchase lands. Let me take a moment to walk through what Adams accomplished in just three years. He negotiated the northern and western boundaries of the United States. He acquired Florida, which was a security risk. It was a foreign-owned territory that gave Spain direct access to the American interior. In a sense, Adams secured the young country's boundaries both physically and psychologically. The agreements with Britain were steps towards ensuring that the two countries would not fight again. The agreement with Spain also took steps to ensuring that there would not be future conflict between those two countries. For Americans, knowing that their borders were now defined contributed to their sense of national identity. We are the people that live between Florida and the 49th parallel and between Massachusetts and the Missouri Territory. That was an incredible accomplishment for any time period, let alone just three years. But Adams wasn't going to stop there. Next, he looked beyond America's newly established borders. As you can see from this map, between 1816 and 1824, many Latin and South American colonies declared, fought for, and won their independence from their European mother countries. In fact, most of them winning independence from Spain. Please pause the video now to look around the map. Welcome back. The governments that lost these colonies were upset and had hopes that they could reacquire the colonies in the future. Before they could do that, though, they had to deal with some trouble at home. They had to deal with the effects of the French Revolution and Napoleon. The revolution's ideas of democracy and freedom spread throughout Europe, and that really upset the monarchs and people of power in those European countries. To combat the spread of democracy, some European countries came together and formed the Holy Alliance. The Holy Alliance was primarily concerned with defending European countries from democratic ideas. Secondarily, there was talk that maybe one day they could support the reacquisition of Spain's colonies in Latin and South America, all those that you saw on the map. This idea of reconquering the New World raised some concerns among the British and American governments. The two governments talked about issuing a joint statement to oppose intervention in Latin America by any power, and that neither the United States nor Britain would try to acquire any of these lands either. In essence, the two countries would declare that an imaginary wall surrounded Latin and South America, and that everyone had to keep their hands off. When President Monroe discussed this idea of a joint statement with his cabinet, John Quincy Adams argued that it was a bad idea. 
He argued that the United States should act on its own, and his view carried the day. President Monroe presented to Congress what would later be called the Monroe Doctrine. The President said that as far as the United States was concerned, European countries should never attempt to reacquire or recolonize the countries of Latin and South America. To preserve democracy, Monroe said, European countries should know that if they do try to reacquire a former colony, the United States would come to the defense of the Latin or South American country in question. As you can see from this cartoon, the United States was saying to the rest of the world, listen, we've got democracy over here and we like it. You can keep whatever system of government you want, but keep your hands off our democratic institutions. Even though Monroe presented this new direction in foreign policy, it was very much driven by John Quincy Adams. So let's review what Adams accomplished. He took steps to ensure domestic security by establishing the Young Republic's physical boundaries. He also encouraged President Monroe to publicly declare that the United States was quote-unquote in charge of the Americas. Europe was not allowed to try to take control there any more, and if they tried, the United States would do everything in their power to stop it. All of these steps demonstrate to the world, and especially Europe, that the United States saw itself as the dominant power in the Western Hemisphere. In class, we will look at the text of the Monroe Doctrine and talk about the possible motivations of the American government. So please come to class prepared with one suggestion as to why the United States government would make a declaration like the Monroe Doctrine. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.